Dried scallops. Dried scallops. Is it scallops or scallops? I mean, I know what a scallop is. I just don't know how to say it. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a professional chef, and in this box are all the ingredients for a batch of $135 dumplings. Hi, I'm Emily, I'm a home cook, and in this box are my $13 dumpling ingredients. Uh-oh. Bye-bye, dumpling box. No, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, all right. Something feels expensive. Okay, I think I can work with this. <laughs> Ooh. I love a dumpling. I love a dumpling. It's what I want most of the time. I've always loved dumplings since I was a little kid. They're a big part of my life. I'm feeling that my dumpling making experience is suddenly incredibly lacking, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. This is a lot of stuff. So for my dumplings, I was planning on making King Crab and Heritage Berkshire Pork Potstickers. I had some excellent ingredients to work with. For my filling, I had some beautiful Berkshire pork belly. Pilo pork and some excellent king crab. Ginger and scallions, fermented black beans. I don't know how to use this. Soy sauce, water chestnuts, and oyster sauce. I always wondered what's in oyster sauce. It is oysters. And everything I needed to make some homemade wrappers. AP flour, vegetable oil, and kosher salt. And of course, a ton of special ingredients to make my favorite dipping sauce. High grade dry scallops. Which is the thing I totally knew existed. I had the rendered lard from the Berkshire pork. Cool, 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 cool. Chin can vinegar, soy sauce, sesame oil, chili paste, sugar, garlic, ginger, and scallions, and cilantro. This is cilantro, this I recognize. This, this, this one I know. Believe me, these dumplings are gonna be very, very special. If I were to describe my feelings right now in a word, that word would be overwhelmed. Concerned. With Emily's recipe, I have some simpler ingredients. Stuff you may find in your kitchen or at your local grocery store. Soy sauce, ground pork, sesame oil, cabbage, some beautiful ginger, scallions, which we're gonna cut up. We have some eggs, some rice vinegar, dumpling wrappers, and some garlic. These ingredients may be simple, but I think I could use my chef skills to make them even better. If I had a guess, I'd say this all costs about $15. Oh, so close. So if I had to guess, I would guess that this all costs like a cool hundo. All right, that's an expensive dumpling. All right, so I have my magic recipe book that Chef Chris sent to me. It's just a list of ingredients. No recipe, as usual. Oh, okay, king crab and heritage Berkshire pork pot stickers. All right, now I know what a pot sticker is, so that's a good start. I have never used pork lard. Well, I mean, I guess I have saved Bacon fan. Lard is one of those things that people say, oh my God, lard, what am I gonna do? How do I do it? It's, uh, it's really just pork fat. And uh, you wanna get the fat into a liquefied state. Lard is your friend. And the dipping sauce. Okay, so a lot of these things go into the dipping sauce. That's news. Breaking down this dipping sauce is you're taking this beautiful pig lard and you add all those aromatics and then you can add your reconstituted scallops and then add your soy sauce. And once you whisk all those things in, they all kind of mingle together. You're gonna to get a beautiful sauce. Okay, so here's the thing. I feel nervous, but I'm going to do my best. And my best includes talking to Rose. Hi, Rose. Hello, Emily, how are you? Hi. So I, I'm making king crab and Berkshire Heritage pork pot stickers. Wow. One thing you want to do is make sure that you have the same amount of filling in all of your dumplings because they'll cook more evenly that way. Cool, that makes sense. All right, for the wrapper, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to estimate and say go with just shy of two cups of flour and then a little less than a cup of warm water and a little bit of salt. And then you're going to want to knead it for a couple minutes and then let it rest. After you rest it, you're going to want to cut it into quarters and then take one quarter and roll it into a thin, thin log. Then you're going to want to just cut off about an inch, take it in your palm of your hand and like press it down a little first, get a little bit of a circle going and then roll it, quarter turn, roll it, quarter turn, roll it, quarter turn. Here's a little secret though. 
I think the center should be a little thicker than the edges. The edges are what you're going to crimp and the center is going to be, you're going to actually flatten them a tiny little bit so that they can make maximum surface contact. Okay, so with the dipping sauce. For the sauce, because the pork fat is solid at room temperature, you want to heat it up and then pour it over your ginger and your aromatics. And then you're going to add your other ingredients. But what a fabulous flavor combination. Uh, yeah, I bet it'll be delicious. Fry them first and be, get a good sear on them and then steam them. You want hot oil and you want to make sure you get a crispy, crunchy brown on the bottom. So you're going to want to let it sit there for a little bit. I think this is going to be delicious. Thanks so much, Rose. I'm always happy to talk to you, Emily. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Do I feel sure that I can do this successfully and well? No, but I feel like Rose believes in me. Let's make some dumplings. All right, so the first thing that I have to do is, of course, make white dumpling wrappers. So let's do that. Flour, about a tablespoon of salt, and a cup of hot water. And no, I don't know where this dog kettle came from. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is pour my warm water in and just turn this puppy on. Oh, <laughs> I might need to bring the bowl up. <laughs> there we go. So Emily, Thank you, you sent me these great dumpling wrappers, but I think it's gonna be a lot more fun to make our own, and it's really simple. All you need is some flour, some salt, and some water that I have simmering over there, and it should be generally somewhere between simmering to not quite boiling. You only really want to start mixing this at the lowest setting, and then once it starts to knead, you don't wanna go anywhere past two. Kind of sounds like it's screaming. So this is going to take a few minutes. It's going to be about 10 minutes of kneading. You could go on to other things, or you can kind of just watch it mindlessly. You think that might be a waste of time, but what you're actually going to do is you're training your eyes to see what stage the dough is in. So sometimes it's good to just take a step back and just watch the magic happen. So the dough's been going for about 10 minutes now, and that's what you want. The dough will be uh, fully kneaded, and the gluten will be developed, and it's gonna look like this. Wow. Look at that, it's a ball of dough. Pretty good. Like all doughs, uh, you're gonna have to rest this for a little bit. A few hours is great, overnight is cool too. Wrap it in a little plastic wrap, take it over to the fridge, and we'll be back in a few hours. All right, so it's filling time, so let's start with our cabbage. It's a very sturdy vegetable. I think one leaf should be fine. And it's got a little stem in the middle. And then we're basically gonna mince it. That's what you get. So the next thing we're gonna do is make our filling for our dumplings. And we've gotta start at the top. So we're starting with the king. So I am going to try to remember what Rose said. So you see there's a couple joints in the crab leg. Mm -hmm. You can actually break those joints push them against the way that they want to kind of bend. And then there's a slight soft part. It's on the inside, cut along there. Okay. Open up the crab leg and you'll have this gorgeous piece of crab meat. And then you're going to probably want to dice it for your filling. This may actually, oh, it does just break off. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. What's happening? Oh, baby. This is so intimidating. Ta-da! And then this, I'm guessing that there's good meat in here, so I'm just gonna go for it. Ah. See? There's meat everywhere. So that's one leg's worth of crab meat, and I feel like that's enough for, for my dumplings. Okay, so let's get this crab meat a shredding. All right, give it a chop. Okay, so crab all chopped and ready to go in dumpling filling. Look at that. Look at how much crab was in that one leg. Oh, I'm gonna eat you soon. Let's move on to our aromatics, and you just want to cut your scallions nice and thin. You can kind of go down a little bit to the white, but this should be good. Ginger, also cut it very thin, lengthwise, and then across. And last but not least, clove of garlic. You can crush it a little bit, right in. Next step for the filling, I have some scallions and my water chestnuts, which I totally know how to prep, and I'm going to just chop these up. Up next, water chestnuts. Okay, so I'm guessing maybe I chop this 
top off because it seems like a skin. Okay, one. <laughs> and we have just some black pepper. We have an egg and the egg is gonna provide a little bit of richness and it's a little bit of a binder. And then the rest of our seasoning. So soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil. This is a very strong oil. A little goes a long way. So we have our ingredients in the bowl. And like I said, you wanna just mix this well. It's as simple as that. Mixing well will clear out all the air from the filling. All right, so water chestnuts are all done and I'm just about ready to mix everything together here. I only ended up using a pretty small chunk of that pork belly, but for these dumplings, this seems like about the right amount. Just making sure I have everything properly chopped. So here are the things that are going into the filling. Obviously we have our beautiful crab, we have our scallions. I also chopped up some ginger. I have my water chestnuts. I have soy sauce and oyster sauce, <laughs> pork. And then these are my fermented black beans and I'm gonna mix them up and then dumpling time. <laughs> so, Rose said to chill this a little bit, so I'm going to do that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna to get to work on my sauce. The rest of the filling is gonna go into the refrigerator to chill for about an hour, and then we'll come back and start forming our dumplings. And into the fridge it goes. All right, the first thing I have to do to make this into dipping sauce is start to shred these dried scallops. I've got dried scallops. Oh, wow. You can grate them first because they're dry and hard and then you're going to reconstitute them in some warm water not hot hot water and I would say because you're going to grate them first you would want to do it for maybe 15-20 minutes if you let them in the water too long they're going to get mushy so you really want to okay. watch that I'm surprised at how soft these are actually. I thought they would be like really hard to shred, but this is super easy. If you're ever asked to shred dried scallops, say, sure, I can do that. Cause you for sure can. Okay, scallops shredded. And I'm just putting some warm water over them like Rose said. And then we wait. It's time for the dipping sauce. We are going to add some of the ginger and scallions and garlic and all those great aromatics. And then I'm going to uh, switch out this uh, rice vinegar for something just a little bit more aromatic, a little bit tastier. And that would be this uh, chin can vinegar. It's darker, it's kind of close to what you would think of uh, balsamic vinegar. So let's put that together now. I'm going to heat my lard and I'm going to heat it over medium. Nothing bad ever happens on medium. <laughs> Chef Chris, thank you so much for the lard. This is a really complicated sauce. I wish you were here to help. <laughs> we have these skines and let's start cutting them up. Put the skines in there. We gotta cut some ginger down. Ginger can be very fibrous. So when you wanna cut it quite small. So in the next we're gonna put a little bit of garlic into this sauce. We're gonna move on to the seasonings. Put the soy sauce in, a good half cup of soy sauce sesame oil, use it sparingly, and a little bit of the vinegar. The vinegar is gonna cut into the saltiness of the dipping sauce, and it's going to provide a nice little acidy, vinegary pop. And here it is, this is the dipping sauce for our dumplings. So here I have my minced garlic, my minced ginger, and some sliced scallions that I'm just gonna put in this bowl, and then I'm pouring my lard over it. Wow! Oh, it smells like bacon, thanks a half a tablespoon of white sugar. And then I'm gonna do one tablespoon of sesame oil, tablespoon of this sambal chili paste, two tablespoons of this vinegar. It smells like balsamic. And three quarters of a cup of soy sauce. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little stir with my fork. It smells really good. It smells really good. And now I'm going to chop up this cilantro. And toss this in. And I'm just going to drain my reconstituted scallops and then pop them in here. And I'll just give this another stir. And we've got our sauce. I can't wait to put this on my dumplings and then put them in my mouth. We're gonna start folding our dumplings now, the fun part. I'm gonna go for like a third of this dough. Right. And then I'm gonna wrap the rest of it back up so it doesn't dry out, because dumpling dough can dry out pretty quickly. We're gonna take our dough and we're gonna make our circles. We're gonna cut these into quarters and then you're gonna make your logs out of these. Let's get logging. About thumb size. You're gonna spread the flour and put some on your rolling pin. And you're gonna make your dumpling balls now. You just ball them up in your hand. 
a nice little ball right there and then right down on the table and you have a little circle. And so just back and forth with the rolling pin, get yourself a nice little dumpling circle. All right, so I'm just turning this into a little ball and then I'm gonna roll it out. Roll, turn, roll, turn. Rose said to aim for a thicker center and thinner sides, so I'm gonna do that. Or I'm gonna try to do that. <laughs> That's the aspiration anyway. And she said about four to six inches in diameter. All right, I'm gonna say that one's good. One. <laughs> Eight hours later. <laughs> so a little bit of uh, filling. Again, one of the things to really focus on is the same amount of filling per dumpling, and you wanna to try to make as much filling in the dumpling as possible to kind of squeeze out all the air. Oh boy, Emily. <laughs> Come on, get it. Become a circle. Become a circle. Oh boy. <gasps> so you have your uh, filling in the middle and you want to kind of fold it up like, uh, like a taco. Once it's folded off, then you're going to take one side and you're going to pinch it. And then you just make the pleat. You kind of put the excess wrapper on the side, on the right side, to the top. And then you kind of do it again. And then you do it again. And then you just form the dumpling. And that's all she wrote. That's it. That's the dumpling. I'm going to put my scoop of filling. We're going to see if that's enough filling, too much filling. I don't know yet. I'm going to pick it up like a little taco. And then I'm just going to start. Ah. Oh, did I make these too small? Nope. I'm doing a terrible job. OK, that's terrible. Well, I guess technically that's a dumpling. Pretend you never saw this. Usually I watch tutorials while I do this sort of thing. I don't have that luxury because I am the tutorial right now. So uh, we're just gonna do our best. So you're pinching and then you're pleating. All right, dumpling number two, getting better every day. Okay, well that one's kind of a mess, but you know, I hear that the third time is the charm. All right, this is the time, I can feel it. This is gonna be a good one. I've definitely lost count quite a while ago, but uh, I can say we have made up to a thousand dumplings a day. Okay, this is gonna be the good one. If I got this in like a dumpling order from a local Chinese food place, I'd be like, yeah, that's what a dumpling looks like. I have no questions. <laughs> that one's almost kind of, Right? Well, eight dumplings made. So I have done my best. I'm not gonna say it was good, but I did it. My dumplings are made, and now I am required to cook them. <laughs> I think number three is my best. Maybe number four. So we've got a half dozen dumplings. Um, that's good for right now. We could definitely start cooking, and let's do it. All right. Let's see what happens. So it's time to make the dumplings. What we are not going to do is we are not going to put our dumplings in the water, walk away, and then let them turn into pot stickers. Today, we're going to put our dumplings in the pan, and I'm going to take some tapioca starch, and we make a batter out of it, and we're going to pour that batter into the pan, and as the dumplings cook, it's going to make this really beautiful crust. Let's see how it goes. All right, so a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm gonna lower this heat. We're gonna put our dumplings in the pan. And now we're gonna make our tapioca batter. So this is a half a cup tapioca starch, and then you're just gonna add about three quarters of a cup of water, mix well, and then that's gonna go into the pan with the dumplings. You don't wanna pour it on top of the dumplings, you just wanna pour it in the pan and then let the batter do its own work. Swirl the pan just a little bit, and then you're gonna add water so you can start to cook the dumplings. And the water is going to cook all the way down and then we'll lift the top and you're gonna have a beautiful plate of dumplings. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on my stove. Put them on medium because nothing bad ever happens on medium. And I'm going to add my vegetable oil to the pan. All right, it is time to do this. And now I leave them alone for several minutes. I have no idea how long to let these cook. I just, I feel like I've lost all sense of time. You want a high flame now to bring the water up to a boil in the quickest amount of time. When the water is almost all the way cooked down, you're gonna lower the pan so you can control the heat of the pan, which totally controls the cooking of your dumplings. It doesn't take long at all, maybe eight minutes after you pour the water in. Okay, these are looking nice and brown on the bottom, so I'm gonna toss my water in and steam them. Whee! 
it'll be fine, it'll be great, everything's good. So I can hear the water at a full boil right now, and uh, you know, obviously you hear the water in it, you wanna lift the top and you wanna peek, but uh, give yourself a few more minutes. I wonder how they're doing in there, my beautiful little dumpling friends. Are they good? Are they well? Do they have love? So you should have a clear cover here because you really don't want to lift the cover until the water's practically gone, All right? So now the water is gone and you can see the crust forming and you'll see the dumplings in the pan surrounded by this beautiful white tapioca batter crust. And now we just have to play around with the heat a little bit to develop it and then the dish will be done. I guess I'm gonna open them up and just peek at them. I just wanna see how they look like they're doing. Ooh, well, they're very soft. So these look, I think, pretty close. I'm just gonna add a little more water and steam them a little bit longer because I think they could use just another minute or two. That might've been more water than was needed. It was like a tablespoon of water. I think it'll be, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. If it isn't okay, then it isn't okay, but I think it'll be okay. As grandfather always said. <laughs> And so this is almost done, and you're gonna see the tapioca uh, starch forming that crust. Basically, when you eat it, it's gonna have that crispy but chewy texture, that kind of stick to your teeth kind of thing, and it's really fun to eat. Let's just finish this off and uh, just take about another minute. I would say the water is very close to all evaporated. All right, my friends, I think it is time. Let's check these puppies out. Woo, yeah. All right, I'm gonna turn that off because the water seems to have pretty much evaporated. I'm going to take my little spatula. I'm gonna get in here. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, I just have to put these together with the sauce and we're good to go. All right, so these are just about done. You're gonna uh, turn your heat off and uh, you're gonna do uh, the fun stuff. You're gonna slide the dumplings off on the plate, which means that you're almost ready to eat. So it's time, we're ready to plate. Let's cut some uh, scallions the long way. Simple thin cuts. And some of the ginger. Sprinkle over the plate, and we're gonna spoon some of our sauce over it. And there you go. The last thing I have to do is plating. So, plated. I hope that Chef Chris is not disappointed in me. I think they're good, but I also know that they're not perfect. But I think they're good and I really can't wait to eat them. They smell really good. All right, these are my version of Chef Chris's dumplings. I hope that he's not disappointed. And this is my take on Emily's dumplings. Pretty proud, looking pretty sweet. First time I've ever made dumplings. <laughs> All right, it is time to taste my dumplings. This is the moment of truth. That looks pretty good, right? That looks like a dumpling. I'm just gonna dip it into my sauce. <laughs> That's really good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's really good. I did make the bottoms kind of thick and crispy, so there's a chew to them, like a crunch a little bit, but it's, I think it's good. The scallion and ginger and garlic bring their deliciousness. And then the sauce has so many more flavors and they're all good. I gotta go lie down. <laughs> I've been on a roller coaster, okay? <laughs> if mine are this good, his must be like off the charts, off the charts. So here we have a pot sticker with a lattice crust and a sauce of chin can vinegar and soy. We can't wait to try it. That's good, that's real good. Chewy, but very crispy. Filling's beautifully cooked, nice and juicy, crispy crust. Skyings, ginger, what else can you want? Looking forward to checking in with Emily and seeing how she did. Hi, hello. Hi, nice Emily. to meet you, Emily. Nice how you to doing? Meet you. So I hope you did, you know, some good stuff with uh, the recipe. Do you want to see them? Sure. You can see the little bottoms. They've got a nice sear on them. That's great. And they look tight. It's a nice tight seal. The skin looks good. Thanks. I'm hungry. I could definitely yeah. dig into those. Your recipe came out great. You see that? Yeah. Those are your dumplings, Emily. They look great. <laughs> they look so much better than my dumplings. <laughs> Take it from somebody who makes dumplings all the time. You know, should, uh, you should be proud. I think it turned out well. I mean, it tasted delicious, but I was like, uh, my folding is so bad and I'm so sorry. <laughs> no sweat, no sweat. See, I always try to like 
tell people, you know, you're doing the dumplings. It's all good. It's it's all good. <laughs> Everybody tries to make them perfect. It's one of those things you're never going to get perfect on the first time. You know, you keep practicing and, and it'll happen. But keep practicing. I, you know, <laughs> you can and you'll. I will. Get, you know, I'm sure you, you you did great. Thank you so much. It was so great to meet you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.